Okay, chapter six. So <coughs> I should write compositing Yes, Photoshop compositing and final painting files work through because uh, I split this in two different uh, files. And um, usually I wouldn't keep as much layers as I did here. Uh, this is a kind of a lot, a lot of layers, but I really wanted you to have access to really all the different tiny steps of the process. Uh, if you have a look at this size, you'll see I've exported these files, I would say only at uh, 3000 pixels. I was working at uh, 6000 pixel wide for the, composi for the compositing um, stage and uh, later on for the um, painting stage where I really work on converting this image to a painting, I've been working at 8,000 pixels. So I'm going to, to go through all of the layers quickly because you'll see me do this uh, in the full process video, but uh, this way you, you'll have an indication of what I really did. Okay, so at the very bottom, I'm to close unwanted uh, windows, so we can really focus on the layers. And uh, I'm sorry, in the full process, you'll see me doing things. I'm using a lot, a uh, very lot of, uh, of keyboard shortcuts. I, I try to avoid as much as possible to use um, menu and um, to use my my, <clears throat> my mouse when I want to access to things. Uh, so for, for, for like the 50 most uh, useful things I, that I do in Photoshop, I, I have shortcuts. So sometimes you, maybe you, you won't see uh, why I, or how I did to access some, uh, some of the menu. Uh, it's because it's, it's in the uh, keyboard shortcut. So here, you'll find my ID pass. So I call it flat for a simple reason. It's because I have a, a script which is assigned to a, to a keyboard shortcut that um, allow me. I'm going to show you that. Uh, let's get back to the initial. And uh, you see, with this script, it what it does. It's something that I I was using what when I was. Um, a comic book colorist and uh, I used to do uh, flat colors to start with and uh, you see even so if I have for example the brush tools enabled and if I use this keyboard shortcuts it will it will uh, put me on the um, the selection the magic wand selector and on that layer and if I click again, I'm coming back to where I was. So for example, if I if I am on this layer here and I just want to paint something very quickly, I can select, thanks to the ID pass, the shape I want to paint on, go back to my brush tool and paint just inside the shape. So it's it's very, uh, very handy uh, shortcut to have. You can make your own, it's very easy with a, with a Photoshop action and uh, it can make you gain a lot of time. So my ID pass for selection, and uh, then this is my base render. Mm. And uh, as I mentioned, and you'll see me do that in the full process, I used um, um, Camera Raw, Camera Raw to kind of tweak my initial uh, base render, and I have a, a, some kind of a base color harmony right from the start. Here I have my ambient occlusion pass set to multiply. Another pass 
and uh, from what I can tell here, it's probably just uh, the the diffuse path that I've I brought back back just on a multiply uh, mode to um, to sharpen a bit the modeling on on her body. So here I wanted to add more of that initial transparency that I had. So I, I just brought the this render with a, a lot of transparency just to, to define this a bit more. Mm, at that stage, I, I changed my mind. I decided to go for for uh, more of a mid high gray um, toga instead of a, of, a, of a more dark values because I wanted her her body her body as I mentioned in the composition uh, chapter. I wanted I wanted her body to hold as kind of one abstract shape and uh, this uh, dark toga was breaking that. Uh, adding more complexity to the composition, and uh, um, I didn't, you know, I didn't want it to go to go that way. Okay, adding a bit more of transparency with uh, that layer which has uh, no toga on it, reinforcing the the silhouette. You see here, so we we can we can really see her underlying uh, uh, anatomy. And sometimes, sometimes I'm doing things. You see, here. Yeah, in fact, this is on uh, on zero. So, ah, yeah, I remember. I decided to deactivate a few layers, but because I wanted you to see to have those layers, I decided to put a red um, flag on them. And this way, because they are activated when I use uh, delete hidden layers, which I often do because uh, sometimes my my uh, files uh, become is a mess, uh, they wouldn't uh, go away. So there is nothing on, on this layer. Reinforcing the the shadows and the modeling on her body with a, 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 an ambient and a, a diffuse render. Another one, which sometimes I, I just absolutely can't tell what, what they do. Okay, so this one is just to Okay, I can see that. Uh, I'm not sure you'll see it in um, in the recording because it's maybe too compressed for you to see that. But I just brought back just a bit of local detail on her knee. It's it's very very subtle. Okay, so here I decided to to bring more reflection on the fabrics. Same here on the uh, furniture, reflection of the furniture, especially on the pla on the, the place I knew would uh, be um, laser. And I'm showing you this in a very linear way, but uh, I, as you'll see in the full process, this is not in that order that I did things. I, I, I I'm, I was sculpted more on an overall approach. So I really encourage you to, to watch the full process anyway, because this is uh, all I thought uh, this tutorial. I really wanted you to have that, that linear approach of, the, of my uh, process and uh, that more analytic approach of that process uh, described with words. And at the same time, you can access to the, to the full process, which, which uh, will show you that, uh, in fact, I'm not uh, that organized. And sometimes things um, goes in in a, some very odd directions. So this is um, an adjustment layer that I, I love, completely love this, this layer. And uh, I do hope all of these are going to be embed um, with the files. I think because I know the patterns are embed. I think they are. Uh, so this is the color lookup. This is a great adjustment layer. It comes with a, a lot of very cool um, adjustments. And uh, because at some times I, I also have had an, uh, a full uh, 
uh, a full subscribe him to to uh, the all uh, Adobe CC. I I copied a few uh, from from other programs, but the ones that comes by default are really great. So it, it's a great way using a combination of different uh, fusion mode to to test uh, color options. So here's the face. Okay, try to define the lips, the eyes a bit, adding maybe what, adding a bit of nothing. There is nothing in that layer. This face is not the de definitive one anyway, but at this point, at this stage, I, I still wanted to to have something working. So the base skin has been disabled. So there's nothing in here. Face details. Okay. Uh, let's see that. Okay, so here what I did, I imported that um, second phase that I I dropped into the scene, and I just patched patched it on top of a uh, of the ancient head, the old head, I should say. So same thing that you saw me did for the for her body. I I'm just com combining various passes. I'm painting with with render passes, sometimes with a mask on it. Where I, I'm, I, you see here the shadow was too strong here, so I just soften it with a with a layer mask. So here, from what I can say, this is um, an amb the ambient occlusion that I brought back just to define a bit more uh, features. Okay, darkening the values of the hairs. Okay. Uh, this one is probably something that I patched. I don't know why, why it's here. It, it will probably make more sense later on. Okay, so sometimes I'm just doing a bit of hand painting just to to correct some something here. I wanted to define her jaw. I brought some uh, colors from underneath to have a color, a correct colors. Corrected the the values, bring uh, some um, some colors to her eyelids and uh, and lips. Bit more here. Uh, this one is so subtle that even I can't tell what is there on top of it. Okay, there was something, but uh, I I can't tell what it is. Ah, okay, I can I can see. Okay, that's, that's a bit very tiny correction. Hairs. Hmm. Okay, so I think I flattened everything of the, on the hairs, but in the full process, you'll see me uh, doing some photo bash to do that photo bash and, uh, and painting. Okay, here I'm, I'm bringing the, the hair in, a, in another color, color space with a value tweak. Okay, eyebrows. And uh, at this point, the eyebrows may, may change now. So this was, I think, an option. I don't remember if I 
I kept it like that. So when I'm not sure, of, for example, at some point, what I do is I'm making a snapshot here. So I have my snapshot. Now I, ca I can go back to the initial file and go back to the snapshot without uh, destroying my, my layer orders. So, OK. Uh, and I, I know those eyebrows doesn't work like that. So uh, I'm going to change, to change them uh, later on. So what I did here is I, I really wanted to soften uh, those shadows on her on her body because um, setting up a proper, very satisfying um, skin material in Keyshot is a uh, super time consuming and uh, it also takes a lot of time to render. So in that case, what I'm doing is just to to soften. The shadows because of the of the uh, light scattering through her, her skin, which happen a lot with um, with skin. Uh, you you can't have that that sharp. Maybe you can, but I, I found it was it wasn't really great. So I just wanted to soften that. Okay, color correcting the whole image. Okay, so now in that part, I'm addressing the shield. I just wanted to invert the um, the value distribution on the shield to match uh, what we had on the armor. Okay, now I'm starting to do something with those values because I, I really wanted this, this background to be more into shadows to, to have more light on her. Curtains. Same here. Curtains was um, <clears throat> too contrasty. And you know, with, with such a contrast, you, you really start, if you squint your eyes, you really start to see that line here and that line here and that line here. And, and this break, the the overall abstract shapes that I had, so I'm just lowering the contrast and uh, and now ex expect from the hand uh, when I squint my eyes, I really can see that there is only one shape. And uh, instead of squinting my eyes, I could also use the navigator to see it in very tiny, which does a lot, almost the same at this size. And uh, as we can see before you can see the detail. So this breaks the shape. I don't want that. I want the shape to stay unified. It's one abstract shape. Okay, I'm lowering the value here on the on the bed because that don't work like that. And uh, I'm starting to add colors. And uh, I really wanted to have that that green, which was a part of the of my reference, my main reference, which is Phydra, Phydra by uh, Alexandre Cabanel. Okay, bring back some, some colors on the cushion behind. So here I'm, I'm starting to tweak, uh, to hand tweak the materials uh, on the uh, leg plates. Okay, background wall. What do we have in here? So as you can see here, I decided to to unify the value of the background wall towards something darker. And uh, here, this is various patterns that, uh, that I've added. And I didn't keep trace of uh, all the process, but you'll see that, you'll, you'll see, you'll, excuse me, you'll see that in the full process. And now playing with various selection methods, I've just added using the so the, this <coughs> is the um, um, diffuse reflection pass that I show you before. Mm, let me find that again. Files. Images and then in here among values passes that I did, I did this 
um, very um, and it's funny because there is absolutely nothing. I think this is this one where the value there is a, a much of a value change I can see on the subsnail. This is this, and I just uh, imported it and um, use a use saturation to push it towards the, the yellow. And I, I added that one in the background What I, I, I just wanted to eat. And uh, maybe it was a mistake, I don't know. But, but I, I, I really loved the, the hint of a, of a reflection that it brings. Columns. And I, I talked about that earlier, so... Because um, I didn't want that to plot the perspective, so I just did this render, and it was just to verify, to check all what what at what degree the curve would be uh, on those uh, columns. But I decided that composition-wise, I really wanted to have those straight lines to match the straight lines that we had on the background wall. I didn't want it to have so, those curves. So, so uh, even though perspective-wise it's wrong, uh, I didn't care. I, I prefer to to think in terms of composition at this stage because I don't think anyone will uh, notice that and uh, it doesn't hurt the, the image at all. Okay. Defining thanks to ambient occlusion, defining the, the pillar, uh, surface shape a bit more, a bit of reflection, uh, here I, I can tell what I, I did, let me see if I can make a selection, ah, okay, it's here, okay, it's here, I just brought a bit of patterning here at the base just to make, to make it more believable. The ground. Lowering the value, that value was way too bright. Okay, bringing some um, patterns on the ground. Um, this one, maybe a duplicate. Oh no, it, it's just to reinforce here. Okay, you can see that, I remember. And uh, here is the ground. It looks a bit old like that. The, the, the camera focal lens was uh, almost orthographic. But um, even though it was a bit, a bit weird like that, once I, I had uh, the um, fur rug, uh, I think it works. It works better, and that's of something I, I already said earlier. But two D and three D uh, lie one to each other, and sometimes something works in three D, but it doesn't make sense in two D and the other way. So often I, I make choices just because they, they work for the image, and I don't care about if they if they work in in the true world. And uh, obviously, this is the whole point of uh, of concept art and uh, fantasy illustration and science fiction illustration. You you're making things that that just seems to needs to to look like they work. They don't really have to work. Most of them can't. So this is my detail layer uh, using the same um, um, reflective path that I showed you before. So you see, I'm bringing the pass in, I'm putting a layer on, and I, I'm just painting the details in. So these are, you'll see me do that in the full process, a combination of, of a creating selection from, um, from black and white um, patterns. And uh, once uh, these are, are converted, converted into a selection, uh, I'm just, uh, Putting in the drawing them in the mask. So 
So here I wanted to have some variations. So I decided to, to darken some parts. Looks more, more interesting. Okay, armor pieces. So this is where I'm going to bring some life to the armor because right now it looks extremely CG. So I'm bringing a bit of color variations and material variations. Um, I, I did a, um, a separate reflection pass, which was more interesting for, for the shield because uh, in the in the main reflection pass that I had, which is um, this one, uh, the patterns weren't super obvious. This one because it's a diffuse reflection; I don't have any anything uh, I can really use for the shield. And uh, this one um, didn't had a very satisfying pattern, so I did another one, which was uh, where it is. Maybe I did not kept it. It's possible. Hmm. Looks like I don't have it. Let me see. I'm to copy that. Remove it, inverse it, put it on normal. Okay. I did not kept it, so I think. Uh, ah, okay, I can see. See this um, spot of light? So I used the reflective light pass that I did for the oil lamp. Here it is. This is this one. And it has a, a more pronounced. Uh, soft metal reflection that I I I I, I use because it was uh, more useful for the narration. So I'm going to delete this. Okay, same thing here. So what you did, what I uh, I did here, you know, when, when you double click on the on the mask, you open the mask property dialog, and you can tweak. Uh, the density, which allow you to to lower the, the mask impact. So this way there are still, while doing this, there is a, a bit of reflection that, that is going everywhere. It's, it's more obvious in here, see? Okay. Okay, strongest, strongest one this time. More pronounced. And this is not the same path as you can see in the thumbnail. This is the, um, the first, um, the first path that I did, which has a sharper distribution. Okay, now it's, it's easy where, uh, where does it start here? So. I really wanted these uh, materials to look like they've been used and uh, they've been used in a in a war. And she, she or maybe somewhere else, we don't really know. But I, I wanted this armor to look like it's been it's been used. So I added scratches. You know, like. Various metal qualities. And sometimes what a layer do or not is extremely subtle. And this one you can almost you cannot almost see it. But in fact it's just impacting the color of the reflection, which is gray, which doesn't make really sense because if it's made of bronze or of copper, uh, a scratch uh, wouldn't be gray. It would be a copper, a copper color, obviously. This is why I did it, and this is almost invisible. You know, this is those kind of details that I'm doing. But I'm going to destroy, completely destroy them anyway in my process later on. So 
But I know if I don't do them, I won't have them. And I prefer to, to have those details and have the leaf theory to, to bring them back later on when, where, when um, I think I need it, whether to, to don't have them. OK. And the last, um, last pass. No, this is it. This is my wheel pass. And, uh, and this one should have been in the, in the wheel layer, but it's on top of it. And uh, here what I did, it was mainly for the, for the metal part. So once again, I brought back my uh, first uh, reflection pass, sharp reflection pass, and I just painted on top of it just to, to add more variations to, um, to the material. And uh, I use my references to, to check that, to have an idea of uh, all uh, uh, I have to find the word in English. Corroded, I think it's corroded. When a, when a metal is is a weathered and it, it's changed a bit of this of its uh, surface property due to uh, its contact with uh, oxygen or various liquids such as uh, eventually blood or I don't know acid or anything. So looking at very old armor, I I saw they had this uh, this kind of variations of uh, specularity that happened where they've been in contact with uh, different uh, weathering elements. So the sheets. Okay, so here I've started to add photo details on top of the base render. This is why most of the time I try to be not too specific not to details in my uh, in my scripting because i know that uh, some details are way much easier to to add in the photo bashing compositing stage rather than in a, in in a 3d okay another another sheet which works quite cool on top of it it has the correct lighting and uh, you'll see me do that in the full process again Okay, just working on the reflection here, which is impacting my my local color, my local values, as you'll see. But uh, if I remember, I'm going to bring this value back by uh, pushing this back toward a, a strong saturated red, which has an inner value, which is uh, quite dark, and by uh, pushing the contrast later on. So, okay, here it is. See, with that on top of it, now it's not that much of a big change of value. Pushing it toward red and correcting the contrast. And now, at that point, I decided, okay, I know this is meant to be the same piece of fabric but uh, it was way too bright in this area, just near the border of the frame. It doesn't make sense to have this, of, this bright of a, of a piece of, a, of fabric and uh, this bright of a, an abstract shape right here. So I decided to try to bring that back um, more towards the value of the ground. And I'm going to show you a really, really cool trick. And you'll see me use this, it's, it's, uh, okay. It's so useful, I really have to show you that in detail. You know, you go in Windows, Range, and you create a new window for that exact same painting. So these two windows are linked to the same documents. They are going to reflect the same changes. Now you can detach that one, reduce it, just put it aside from here, where it doesn't uh, Know you, okay. And now you go into your view, proof setup, and in your proof setup you can go into custom, 
And in Q Custom, you can choose one of those black and white uh, color profiles. Uh, you can experiment with whatever you want. Gray gamma, for example, 2.2, let's see what it does. So I choose a device to simulate, which is a black and white device. And now, if I'm using, using the, the keyboard shortcut, which is Control Y, okay, I'm, I'm switching in that specific windows from color to black and white. And you can, you can experiment with a different proof setup. Maybe if I go back to the original, original one that I had, which is .game, until person is there is absolutely no difference. So this one is perfectly fine. So this is a great way to have, at the same time, a black and white value focused version of your image when you are still working on the on the color. So I'm going to to keep that in here, you know, and along with your with your navigator, which gives you a tiny vision of your image. Um, in the in the very important steps where I'm working on a color harmony and values, I try to have that at screen all the time. So it gives me different read of the same image. And I was saying that to tell you about, you see, and in black and white now, it, it's, it's very, very obvious of a change. So in my, in my black and white sketch, if you remember of this black and white sketch, let me open it again. Which is this one? Okay. Here, very cool to have all of those uh, files at the same at the same place. Okay, I have kind of this mid gray, which spread from the armor to the ground, and to the dark piece of fabric even though it goes it goes higher in here so i could either had this piece of fabric here to be completely completely dark like that and this way i would i would still still be okay with my initial sketch or i could just did uh, as i did uh, give it a value that was closer to the value of the ground so this is kind of the, of the same, even though there is a strong gradient from here, and uh, there is a steps, very important steps. Uh, this is most the, um, most homogeneous. So now the fur rug. So the fur rug, I just used photo bashing, and uh, here I, I think I am. Um, I flattened, in fact, the different uh, photos that I use as, as references to, to photo bash all that, but um, here it is. So for a rug, a bit of value adjustment and the underneath um, shadows for, for, for it to really stand on something. Okay, Toga, here I decided to, I decided to really desaturate that Toga. I really, wanted to have in some places which are this one we just addressed and her toga to have a uh, strong gray really really gray as gray as possible as possible in this color in these color schemes so sometimes in one color schemes gray your mid gray won't be a mid gray if you look at it objectively, but it has to be perceived as some kind of, of gray. And uh, this is where I wanted to have it. I thought it would it would really make, make her to pop her skin, her face, and all these really nice colors around would spread, would uh, pop strongly with, with that gray. And uh, the detail. So for the detailing, if you remember here, I did 
a quick roundup as with um, the texture where it is I'm going to find it where are you strange I'm sure I, I show it to you in the other chapter Sorry, I'm going to pause the recording to, to. Good, here it is. So, I just did this, this flat render with a flat material just to to have um, a hint and a, and to be able to make a selection out of this uh, black and white informations. So this is what I did, and after I, I manually added the other, the other patterns and the other details. And uh, the path behind it is still the same uh, reflective path that I, I um, colored toward the yellow using the hue saturation adjustment. So what I call the bikini, I'm not sure it's the correct word, but uh, I just added that. Shadows. I've just duplicated the, the first information, and uh, I realized it, it wasn't uh, obvious enough with one. So just added a second one, and uh, I, I was I also loved the way it was it was um, working uh, with that straight line, this curve here. It's it, it really I think it really helped to to feel the the, um, the anatomy. To read rather than feel more read the anatomy, we don't have to exactly feel it. And uh, this is my my general uh, shadow path that I use to incorporate the different elements, one with each, with, uh, each other. Uh, obvi obviously, thanks to 3D, most of the integration is already there. But uh, for the fur rug, for the different piece of sheets. Uh, of fabric, I mean, I I, um, I had to to do a bit more work on integrations. So this is just um, a level layer, and I I just adjusted uh, the, the overall um, gamma curve and um, and value. And now these are the post adjustment and. Most of what I call the post adjustment are, are most of the time color correction, value correction, and so on. So let's have a look at that. So a bit of detailing, manual paint and painted. Okay, so here I use the two renders that I did. Thanks to thanks to the UV layouts that I did, it was quite easy to create uh, any kind of uh, of surface details in a texture file. So there are two of them. They are just uh, in um, reparted in a, in a, in odd uh, fashion. So one is in black, one is in. Uh, Another material, same the same material as the detailing. So here, uh, and please refer to the to the full process to see what I did. I um, just use liquify to bring a bit of a uh, destruction and uh, and uh, a bit of life, just a bit of life to this uh, to this shield because it. It was too perfect, so I just moved moved the different uh, pixels around to get something that feel a bit more used and uh, on a, on the battlefield. And the same thing for the armor in here. And uh, you see how it it immediately bring a, a layer of uh, believe believability 
very difficult word to say for a French believability I hope you you'll see what I mean by by that um, the oil lamp for some reason is the in the in the post folder but anyway here it is so these are the different um, renders that I brought on lighten mode just to have the the reflection on places I wanted to have it lighten and darken are among my, my most used uh, layers and I'm going to at this point I think it's a good moment to show you another thing that I'm using all the time and I have to say that um, I've always been completely fascinated by Photoshop. Um, the first time I, I installed Photoshop on a computer, I was uh, 19. It, it was Photoshop 3.0. It was quite, kind of a long time ago. I think it was in uh, 1998. And uh, I remember I bought this this stupid book about uh, Photoshop and how you could uh, just tweak a photo and change the sky. I, I, at this moment, I just found this so amazing. So I did. I, I wasn't using this for anything else. You know, at this time I was at 100% in the music, but I just found this software very cool. So I just keep learning about it. And uh, sometimes when I was a musician and I needed to to do some visual for 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 a band, I I was using Photoshop for that. So uh, I just uh, just to say that I always always feel at, at home with uh, with this software, which is just so amazing. It just offers so much possibilities. So here's one one of them. Instead of using a darken mode, a lighten mode, as I did, you can create your own lighten mode. Uh, with another very cool feature of Photoshop, which is when you double click on the layer, you can access the property of that layer. This is where you can decide to add some uh, effects and so on. You can decide on, on which channel you're going to act. And sometimes you can get some really cool effects using that. And uh, here you have the blending options. And for example, if I choose to move this, you can see immediately it's going to create uh, some kind of automatic mask based on the value of the current layer or based on the value of the underlying layer. And uh, using that, you can really achieve super difficult effects to, to do otherwise. You know, you know, for example, if I wanted to this to impact, let's say, only the reflective material that we had behind, if I wanted to pretend that uh, this painting is super reflective and um, the other one is uh, is super matte, so I wanted to, to have that strong of an impact of this material, I just could use that. And uh, with just keeping Alt uh, on my keyboard and choosing one of those two cursor, you see, you see I can start to create a, a gradient in the mask itself. So uh, you'll see me use this a lot in the um, in the uh, full process video. It's, this is super super useful. Okay, so just to say that, for example, I, I can do my my own lighten layer which will be based on absolute value instead of local value. What the lighten layer does, it's it comparing the just the underneath pixel for each pixel, it comparing the underneath pixel. And uh, if it's dark lighter in this layer than the the bottom pixel, it's going to use the pixel of the top layer. In, what you can achieve with this is to decide of on absolute values. For example, here I'm deciding that uh, for the absolute value of 35 on a scale of 255, uh, I don't want the mask to go higher. And here between the two, I want to gradient 
probably this is the linear gradient. So you can see it does almost the exact same thing in that uh, specific case. Anyway, a bit of glow, bringing this um, this very um, oil lamp that I beautifully sculpted in ZBrush. Took me around five minutes. ZBrush is so so amazing, by the way. If I would have painted this by hand, it would have, it took me like twenty five minutes, I think, because I I suck at painting. So here it is for the oil lamp, flame. The underneath um, support that I just painted by hand to be to be a uh, most. Uh, there is always a point where before moving to ZBrush or moving to Photoshop, I always try to assess whether it's going to be faster to do uh, in one or the other software. And in that case, it was way faster to just do this. Uh, in Photoshop. Okay, so cotton sheet. What is this cotton sheet here? Okay, that's just a bit of detailing on the on uh, the um, knee. And here I wanted to break this strong, very strong shape here. I found it was distracting to have this strong of a shape, and I wanted to, as I said before, compared to my initial sketch. I wanted to keep kind of this wall area as a as a consistent value, even though there is a lot of details. This is why I decided to bring this um, this laser strap just to pretend it was something to to finish to to attach the armor. Okay. And uh, here are some manual painting to, to bring all the different uh, parts of the fur together. Probably some shadows in here, I'm not sure. Yeah, shadows in that part, you can see that. And some lighting. So this is the integration of the, of the leather strap. Okay, big part, very big part, the adjustment, value tuning and so on. So I think I'm going to do this chapter in two parts. This is a kind of an important chapter and uh, right now I need to take a break. So see you in the second part.